The aim of this tutorial is to pick up on some tools that we haven't perhaps covered properly before we start moving on to things like media generators and text and all the other bits and pieces that go on from there. And some of these are just simple editing tools which uh, if you don't know about them you don't know about them and I just want to point them out for you. One of the items is that rather than using the mouse to go through all your different menus you can actually get to a menu in a totally different way. So for example I've got Sony Vegas selected, that's all I've got selected. But if I tap the Alt key and look at the menu at the top, so you see the menu at the top here, if I tap Alt, I get a little line under all the different letters that begin each of the words. Now if I now tap the letter that's beginning of a word, so say insert, tap I, up comes the menu. And you'll see that there are lots of different letters underlined which allow me to do different things. So for instance, if I want to insert another video track, if I now tap V, I've inserted the video track. And if I go again, tap Alt, and I do O for options, I can go down and I can say, well, what do I want to do? Do I want to mute all video? You'll see to mute all video is D. D, all video is muted. Okay, and again, if I want to undo that, Alt key to get the little lines up, O for options, and to mute all video, again, hit D. Now these are not keyboard shortcuts, so don't learn these as keyboard shortcuts. They're just ways of being able to access the menu without having to use the mouse all the time. And it can save you a lot of time. So remember, it's just tap that Alt key and those letters get underlined. And then you tap whatever letter shows and you can quickly get through them. So H for help. And I can go down to, say, interactive tutorials or keyboard shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, K, up comes the keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so it's a way of avoiding having to use the mouse if you want to without learning specific keyboard shortcuts. So that's one really helpful tool. Another really helpful tool is that you can actually rename all your events in the timeline without changing their name up here. I have briefly touched on this before, and it's under the view menu. So if you go to view and you go down to active take information, you'll see that you've got the active take information here displayed inside the timeline for each of the events and you can change them to anything you like. To change them you can either right click on them and go to take and then choose rename active or notice that F2 is the keyboard shortcut. So if I select an event and I hit F2 it becomes highlighted and I can call it whatever I want, enter and it's done. And it has not changed the original file boat into harbour up here wherever it is which is towards the top, boat into harbour. So there's the original clip. It's not changed it. I've just changed what I'm calling it inside the timeline. So the event's being changed inside the timeline. Incidentally, if you've got audio and video, you have to do each individual event separately. And you can rename them without actually affecting the name of the item, which is just a useful little item. And also, if you do do time stretch, it gives you a, a, fee, a bit of feedback that you might not otherwise have got. So I'm going to turn that off. If I go to view, I go back down to active take information, that information disappears. It's useful to know it's there, it's useful to know that you can actually have it. Another really useful little feature is for adding notes to clips which are searchable, which is really good. If you're inside your project media panel and you go from, I think we're at thumbnails, and you go to details, you'll notice if I pull it out that you've got an awful lot of information here. Remember this button takes it across the screen and we've got an awful lot of information, okay? a great deal of information that, that you can use and find valuable. For example, we can give a rating to a particular shot. So we can click rating, we can make items searchable by ratings, but if you click in there, you can actually give a rating to something. You can move these, by the way. So if I want to move ratings, say just before channels, and then maybe even further along. So say I want rating pretty much close to the beginning, I can take rating and I can move it right to here. In fact, let's just carry on dragging it all the way across. I'm going to put it right next to comment in there. So ratings and comments are right next to each other. But if I make a comment, and I'm going to make, I don't know, whatever I'm going to put in here. Let's, uh, let's make a silly comment. So I'm going to say silly. Okay. There's a word silly. Enter. It's in there. It's in the comment field. Okay. So if I just minimize this now so it's gone, do a search. Here's the search function here. And I was to type the word silly. Enter. There is the silly one, and I can actually again go back to thumbnails, and there is the thumbnail which has got the word silly. So bear in mind that if you add a term to a comment or even a search term, you can actually search what you've put in there, and it's a great way of adding a lot of detail information 
to any item that you have inside your project media panel. You can't do it inside your Explorer, you do it inside your project media panel and as you saw there is an awful lot of information that you can add. Now a couple of other bits and pieces that are quite useful is that in your timeline, if you just want to see the timeline, you hit F11. Okay, and there's your timeline, you're just seeing your timeline and sometimes you really want to zoom in here and you don't really want all these bits and pieces here. If you hold control and F11, all your headers disappear. Now if I hit F11 again, you'll see that the headers have remained disappeared. I actually need to do control F11 to get them back again. Now sometimes that can be really useful. You don't want the headers, they're taking up extra room, so control F11, they're gone. And then F11 will toggle in the normal way, and if you want the headers back, it's control F11, up and down, and there they are. Just another useful little tip. Now I'm going to go to this item just here, and I'm going to do 5 on my number pad to go into expanded edit mode. Now I'm in expanded edit mode, one of the things that we notice is when we actually trim a clip, so here is this clip selected and I start doing four to trim it, you'll notice that it loops. So it's looped this item at the beginning here and, and it, it just looks a bit weird, I'm going to undo that. But if you actually right click on a clip and you go to switches, you'll notice that you can turn off that functioning loop. And once it's done, it just won't go, I'm tapping four, tapping one it won't actually go any further than what's actually there. Okay, so I can go the other way and I can trim it back that way and I can trim it back this way, but it won't go any further. So if you're having problems with things looping, then you can actually turn off loop through switches. There's obviously an awful lot more that you can learn through all of this. One last item, again, I'm going to tap five, get out of expanded edit mode. And the other item is when you want to preview a long timeline. Okay, so I've got lots of stuff on this timeline here. Okay, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces. Now, if I want to preview this, if I hit my spacebar to preview it, it's going to do it at real time. However, I've shown you this item here where you can actually pull things through quickly. And when you let go, it goes back to normal. But notice this item underneath, this triangle. If I pull this triangle up, notice it says normal rate. And if I pull it up, I can go up to two, I can even go up to three, I can go up to four. I'm going to go to, say, three or thereabouts. Now when I hit my spacebar, my timeline is going to play through at three times the standard rate, so I can get a feel for what's going on. I've got a real playback happening really quickly, and that's probably faster than I would get if I was actually working with JKNL. Now if I hit L, I'm going to get standard playback, and I can... Okay, so I might be able to get that fast, and J obviously plays backwards can do all of that but if you just want to work on a space bar you can set it at say three times or four times or whatever you feel you can hear if it's a talking head you'll struggle to get past two and actually make any sense of what's being said but by actually moving this item and setting it at a different place I can say I can take it right up to four so when I hit my space bar that's now going to play four times speed through and I can get a feel for if any problems and I can see well there you go I've got a problem already there was a transition issue there so I can go back and sort it out when you're finished, if you double click it, it returns back to default standard playback. Okay, so these are little tools that make an awful lot of difference when you're working inside Sony Vegas Pro, which is a superb video editor. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.